The question today is about reduction of nonlinear laws to linear laws, and the question reads two variables a and b are connected by the equation a is equal to k b raised to n, where k and n are constants. Then the table below gives values of a and b. So find a linear equation connecting a and b for part a, then part b. Draw a suitable straight line graph to represent the relation in the air above and use the scale 1 cm to represent 0 0.1 units on both axes. So we have the grid as shown and then lastly part C, use the graph in B above to estimate the values of K and N. So right to the first part, we are required to find a linear equation connecting A and B. And for a linear equation, it should always be in the form y is equal to mx plus c. And the equation that you're given is a is equal to kb raised to n, which is nonlinear. So we need to express this equation here in linear form that is in the form y is equal to mx plus c so we are going to achieve that by introducing logarithm to base 10 on both sides so logarithms to base 10 that is common logarithms so we can just write logarithm of a where 10 is silently here even if don't indicate it's still logarithm to base 10, so that is common logarithms. Then on the right hand side also we introduce logarithm to base 10, that is logarithm of k b raised to n. Now to the right hand side of this equation we are going to apply the laws of logarithm, and that means we are going to have logarithm of a on the left hand side is equal to logarithm of k plus, remember here we have multiplication, k times b raised to n, so we have the addition law, so plus logarithm of b raised to n, and in the next step n will come and multiply by logarithm of b, so that we have logarithm of a is equal to logarithm of k plus n log b. Rearranging this, we can have logarithm of a is equal to, so let's have the second term coming first, n log b plus, and then have log k. So this already is in the form y is equal to n x plus c, that is y is equal to mx plus c, where logarithm of a corresponds to y, then n corresponds to m, where m is a gradient, and then logarithm of b corresponds to x, and then log k corresponds to c, and c here is a y-intercept. So usually we plot y against x, so in this case y against x, where y is the dependent variable while x is the independent variable. So for our case we'll have logarithm of a as the dependent variable and logarithm of b as the independent variable, so that when we have to plot we will simply plot logarithm of a against logarithm of b. So from this we will therefore move to the next part. Remember the linear equation connecting a and b for this case is right here. Logarithm of a is equal to n log b plus log k. So to the next part 
draw a suitable straight line graph to represent the relation in A above using the scale as shown. So in order to draw a straight line graph, then we'll have to get logarithms of A and logarithms of B. That means we're going to introduce a row in the table. So we have a row for logarithm of A. We'll also have another row for logarithm of B. So that filling in will have logarithm of 1.5 being 0 0.0.1761 0 according to my calculator. Then logarithm of 1.95 is 0 0.2900 and the next one is 0 0.3997 then for 3.2, I have 0 0.5051. And finally for 4.5, I have 0 0.6532. Then for logarithm of B, I have logarithm of 1.59, that is 0 0.2014. Then for 2.51, we have 0 0.3997. Then for 3.8, I have 0 0.5999. Then logarithm of 6.31, that is 0 0.8000. And lastly, logarithm of 11.5, that is 1. 0.0607. So with these values we can now plot on the grid. So we are simply going to have the x-axis and the y-axis. So let's have the y-axis right here. And then the x-axis beginning right here. So this is for x-axis and this right here is for y-axis. So let me write x-axis and right up here we have y-axis. So in order to plot, remember according to the scale, we are told one centimeter should represent 0 0.1 units. So that means from our table, we are going to express the values we calculated to one decimal place. Like for example, here we have 0 0.2, here also 0 0.2, so we are going to plot 0 0.2 against 0 0.2 for the first point. So we're going to have, according to the scale, let's write this first. So if we begin from the origin being 0, then we have 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5. 0 0.5, so we'll have this until all the values in the table are accumulated. And then on this other side, we have 0 0.1, 0 0.2. And then remember, here is supposed to be logarithm of A, and this side logarithm or B. So when we're plotting, just as we had seen earlier on, in the first part we have 0 0.2 again 0 0.2, so we have a point right here. Then the next point is 
0 0.4 against 0 0.3 so we have 0 0.4 0 0.3 right here so let's plot that 0 0.4 0 0.3 so we have it right there and the next one we will have 0 0.6 0 0.4 so 0 0.6, 0 0.4, maybe 0 0.6, 0 0.4 right here, there. Then the next one we have 0 0.8, 0 0.5. So let's plot 0 0.8, 0 0.5, 0 0.8, 0 0.5 is right there. So 0 0.8, 0 0.5. Right there. Then next, we're going to have the last one 1.1, 0 0.7. 1 1.1, 0 0.7. So that is 1.1, 0. 0.7. 7 right up here so the next thing I wish that we note here we can see a correlation we are going to have a straight line graph that is a linear graph drawing the line we are simply going to have a straight line as shown so let's have a ruler so if you have a ruler ensure that it passes through these points so we're going to have this so the line we're going to draw here is called line of best fit and the properties for line of best fit is that at least you need to have equal distribution of the scatter points on either side of the line that you have to draw that is the line of best fit otherwise it needs to pass through the middle of the scatter points so the line of best fit we're going to have as follows so we have this so you need to take note that the line of best fit doesn't have to pass through all the points but at least through three quarters of the points and if it cannot pass through three quarters of the points then at least it needs to cut through the middle of the scatter points you have so i believe i'd already said that earlier so this is the graph that is required for this part now we will use this graph to answer part c we are required to use the graph in b above to estimate the values of k and n so here we will bring back the previous equation this equation right here log a is equal to n log b plus log k so let me write it again so we have log a is equal to n log b plus log k one thing we need to take note of here is that n is the gradient m that is the gradient and log k is c that is in the equation of a straight line y is equal to mx plus c so log k is c which represents the y intercept so let's begin with determination of the value of k so we're going to read the y-intercept which is the point where 
the graph cuts the y-axis that is at point 0 0.1 so that implies that log k from the graph is equal to 0 0.1 so in order to get k we will read the anti-log of 0 0.1 and for my calculator I'm getting 1.25 Eight nine, and then the next is to get the value of n, which is the gradient. So n is the gradient, and the gradient is given by change in y over change in x. So here we will have to identify two points on the line that we use to determine the gradient. So at this point we have 0 0.1 and then 0 0.14, 0 0.1 comma 0 0.14. Then we also have another point, let's say 0 0.7, then 0 0.44 right here, 0 0.7 comma 0 0.44 so using these two points we can therefore get the gradient which will be equivalent to the value of n so change in y over change in x that is 0 0.44 minus 0 0.14 and then all over the change in x so we have change in y over change in x, which is 0 0.7 minus 0 0.1. Okay, so here we have 0 0.3 over 0 0.6, and that is a half. And that finally the values of n and k as we've seen so k is 1.2589 and n is 0 0.5 or a half so that is it for this question and thank you for your patience thank you for watching hope to see you in the next video